with us as we start the service. to be in your house and to worship you. God, I am so thankful for the youth we get to see on the platform right now. Lord, how you've moved in their life and you've called them for those that are back in the sound room and in the pews, God, how you move in the young and old alike. God, we have come today to worship you. Lord, we have come today to hear your word. And we have come today, God, because you are here. And we desperately desire your presence. So Lord, as we continue to sing songs of worship and praise, may you be honored. May you be lifted up and glorified in our hearts. May your will be accomplished in this service today. 
And Lord, we ask that you be with Pastor Mark and Ruth as he travels as our DS across Atlanta, Canada, and ministers uh, where he is today. May you be with him. And God, we just give you glory, for you are great. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 All right, so uh, I'll tell you a little bit about who we are and why we're here today. Um, yeah, you guys can sit down. <laughs> um, we are called Connection Ministries, and uh, that's what we chose to call ourselves because one day last year at Big Lake Camp, a group of us ended, out on the, ended up out on the swing set really late after family camp one night, and we just started talking about the things that we loved about our church and our district, the things that we wanted to see changed about our churches and about our districts, and the things that we didn't like so much that we knew, hey, someone should work on this, someone should do something about this. And then we decided, okay, so why not us? Why don't we do this? Why don't we fill this gap that we see? So we got real creative. Uh, we decided to call our group Connection Ministries since our whole focus is on trying to connect churches with their youth and trying to connect different churches better together so that we really could uh, worship God as one great body rather than be separated in our churches. So um, I'll introduce each of us. Um, you guys know Alyssa. She's done all of the preparation for our worship today. She's done an amazing job. Uh, Joey is on the drums too. Zach Lowe, he'll be singing today. Um, I'm Cameron Smith, I'm gonna be singing too. And then, uh, thanks. Um, and Caden and Gabby aren't officially part of our group, but they were very gracious to come and help us out today because some of our group was leading worship in, I think, two or three other churches across the district today. So, um, yeah, and we've also got Brady Getson back there doing all of our slides. It's a really hard job because we jump all over the place, so be very grateful for him. All right. I, I, I said Caden, Sonia. No, I was telling Joey he was fired for playing drums. <laughs> all right. So some of our songs are a little bit newer. We hope you will sing them loud and proud anyway and worship our God with us. So why don't we stand and we can go into our next song.
Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Wonderful. Aren't you glad to be here? Amen. Do you know that when I was a teenager in the Olaria Church of the Nazarene, I played guitar, and the church gave me a chance with a few of my friends to be able to come and, and play some music, but we didn't know any worship music like these guys. We took old rock songs and changed the lyrics to them, and it was loud, and it was bad, and the church was very forgiving. I hope you know how blessed you are to have this group with you today that actually know what they're doing. <laughs> uh, so guys, thank you so much for being here. Can we give these guys a hand? As I mentioned earlier, Pastor Mark and Ruth are away. He's traveling as our new district superintendent. Glenn, are you okay? Okay. Um, so please, remember him in prayer as they travel, and he'll be traveling a fair amount, um, getting oriented into the position. So please, 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 remember him and Ruth in your prayers. Um, the announcements this morning are in your bulletins, and if you haven't received one, you can get one at the back on your way out, or you can make a mad dash now to get one. A few things I would like to point out are camps. Camp is in full effect, and some of you have already been there. Some of these people um, have gone from a trip to Guatemala right into camp, right into here, and they have not slept in between. And so um, that sounds like a great time. Um, but... Uh, Pastor Jody, you have Young Adult Camp happening next, is that correct? Yes. This weekend. Are you excited? Yes. When does, a, when does a young adult become a not a young adult? When they feel that they're not a young adult anymore. When you feel that you're not a young adult anymore. So for those of you that still feel as though you are a young adult, you are invited to the Young Adult Camp. And Pastor Jody will make all the accommodations for you, so you can just talk to her about that. Youth camp is coming, but family camp is right around the corner as well. If you've never been to family camp, it is an amazing time together with our family from across the district. I would encourage you uh, to make it a priority for your family. We will be there with bells on, and, uh, and others will be all over the campground. It's just a wonderful place to be, and the Spirit of God is so um, present there. But he's also here this morning, and aren't you glad? So, uh, you can look at the bulletin. The only other thing I'd like to point out is if you are interested in, uh, in being baptized at family camp every summer, there's Baptism Sunday. If you have given your life to Christ and have not yet been baptized, then in a few weeks, it could be your time. And I would encourage you, if you're interested in being baptized, to call the church office and let us know. And we will, we will contact you and, and talk to you about baptism and then go from there. So... Unless there's anything else that I've missed that, that someone else needs to say, I'll call on the ushers and we'll receive this morning's tithes and offering. Johnny, would you return thanks? Our Heavenly Father, once again, we give thanks that we can come into your house and worship you here today. Lord, we know that you are the great provider that all good things come us from you. Lord, we give thanks for the offerings that are about to be received. We ask that these offerings be used to do your work to further your kingdom. Please bless both gifts and giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
So this next song is called Overwhelmed, and the song really talks about it, makes it sound like a very beautiful thing to be overwhelmed, but in that moment when God is overwhelming you, it feels a lot more terrifying than it does beautiful a lot of the time. So this song kind of speaks about if we just listen to God in that moment and go with what he's trying to tell us, even if we're like, God, please stop, this is not what I want to hear right now. Out of that overwhelmed moment, God will bring beautiful things, and this song is about following that and letting yourself give into it as he calls us.
we're going to call the children up to dismiss these guys for the service.
All right. Well, I'm, uh, I'm really, honestly, I'm pretty happy to be here this morning sharing uh, the word with you. I'm uh, pretty excited. Uh, as, as Brad said, uh, I'm one of the ones who went to, to Guatemala and then made the maybe on intelligence decision to immediately cancel children's camp. Yeah, so, but before I, I pray, if at any point in this sermon I start talking to you all like you're eight years old, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. I've just been doing it for two weeks. I've been blessed to have that opportunity. I'm real sorry if it happens. <laughs> all right, so we're, uh, I'm, I'm gonna pray before we, uh, we start this morning. Uh, Father God, I, I pray that as, as I bring the word this morning that it would not be my own. I pray that I would simply be a, a vessel for you, God. God, I, w- I would pray this morning that the people here have, have softened hearts, God. I pray that as we come into your church, we come here eager to learn. We come here eager to get closer to you and and know more about you, God. I pray that we would do that today, that we would grow in our relationship with you. Lord God, I I thank you for this opportunity. And God, I pray that, okay, none of these words be mine, but but yours. I thank you for for the people here, God, and I I pray that we have a, a, a... Blessed morning, praising you and, and learning more about your word, God. Amen. So we're starting this morning off in the, the book of First Kings. If you want to turn with me, uh, we're, we're First Kings chapter 17, uh, I believe, verses 2 to 16. So here we find uh, the story. Uh, it's, it's a story about Elijah. Elijah was a, a prophet. I've I've preached on Elijah a couple times. It's always a good time. He, he did some, some pretty phenomenal things, but uh, I'm gonna read. Uh, so it's, uh, it's uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, verses two uh, to 16. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kareth ravine east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the Kareth Ravine east of the Jordan and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Sometime later, the brook dried up, and because there had been no rain in the land, uh, then the Lord God uh, came to him, uh, go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, A widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, and bring me please a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah told her. For there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar, the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry. In keeping with the word, the Lord spoken by Elijah. So in the, in the passage of scripture just before this, uh, Elijah announced that there would be a great drought upon the land. So this is, this is why God had called uh, Elijah to go to this ravine. He, he spoke to him and said, go stay in the ravine. Uh, I, will, I will send ravens to give you bread and meat, and there will be a brook uh, to drink from. And Elijah, Elijah obeyed God. He, he knew that he would provide for him, and, and he did. So as, as Elijah was uh, at, the, at the ravine, he was, he was just as the Lord had promised. Ravens were bringing him bread and meat in the morning and in the evening, and he had, he had water from the brook. He was uh, keeping his, his, his God had, had given him this promise, and he was, he was staying okay in the, the drought and the famine. But then the brook dried up. His, his water uh, was gone, but the Lord still provided. The Lord sent 
uh, Elijah to, to go somewhere and wait for a widow, and Elijah did so. Elijah knew the Lord would provide. And as he, he saw the widow, he asked for water from the well, and as she was getting it, Elijah yelled, may I have uh, some bread, please? She responded uh, with, with saying, she, all she has is uh, some flour and some olive oil. And with that, she's gathering sticks to go home and make some food for her and her son. And she, she said and die at the end because that, that was it. That was what they had. Her, her, her idea at that point was, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this final meal for me and my son and, and that's it. That's all we have because of this famine. But then Elijah said, do, do what you plan, but first take what you have and make me a loaf of bread. Make me a small loaf of bread. And then go make yours for you and your son. And if you do so, uh, the Lord will provide. The, the flour will, will never run out. The, the oil will never run dry. And, and she did so. She followed Elijah's commands from God. And the flour never ran out and the oil never ran dry. God provided for Elijah as he, he, had, he had promised. Elijah had, had trusted God and without that trust, he, he wouldn't be in the same place he was. So Elijah, Elijah sent God first to the ravine. There he provided with the crows. There he provided with the brook. And once the brook ran out, again, he, he provided. He sent Elijah to the widow. And there they were, they were provided for. We can, we can have the same, the same trust. If God calls us to a place where, where we need something, he will provide. If God calls us to stay at a ravine because of a drought, he's gonna give us, he's gonna give us what he, he told us. It's an unlikely scenario now, I assume. But, but he called Elijah there and he fulfilled his, his promise. He provided for Elijah because that's where he called him. If God calls us somewhere, no matter where it is, if God gives us a calling in our life, he will provide. He will provide as long as we have trust in him. If we trust the Lord and, and obey his calling, he, he will provide. Uh, we're going we're gonna to read uh, Proverbs. Uh, it's Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. I, I love these verses. Uh, I remember being uh, taught this verse when I was like a, a slightly younger version of the child I very much still am. It, it's, it's a verse that really, really stuck with me. Uh, it's, it's one I'm, I'm sure we, we all probably know. Uh, so it's uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. In all your ways, submit to him. There's a key word in there in both these situations, all. If we trust God, we submit all to him. If we, if we are to trust God with our life, we trust him with all of our life. We talk about surrendering to God. We talk about giving our lives over to him and we are, we are to do that, but we are to give all of our life because if we, if, we, if we look at our life and we pick out certain pieces, if we say, God, you can have these parts of my life but not these ones, we haven't put our full trust in the Lord. We haven't trusted him to provide for us. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. If we surrender entirely to him, if we give him the entirety of our trust in situations where he calls us places, we will, we will have a, a straight path like Elijah. He called Elijah to the brook. He called Elijah to, to the widow, and there he, he was satisfied. There he was fulfilled. He was provided for. If God calls us, we must obey that calling and then we must, uh, we, we, we will be provided for, we will have a filling. Um, I'm hopping scripture again. We're gonna go in the Psalms now. Uh, the reason we're doing this is if we, if we look in, in scripture, we, we find so many verses that tell us to trust in the Lord with our lives, to, to surrender all to him. This is Psalm 118, uh, verses eight to nine. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. 
when we talk about taking refuge in the Lord, I think that, that's part of trusting him. We, we trust that he will, will keep us safe. So it is better to take refuge in the Lord and have our trust in the Lord than to leave it with man. Man makes mistakes, man has faults. If we take refuge in man, no matter how powerful they are, we will be disappointed at some point in time. If we go to man continually, we will be disappointed. But if we go to God continually, if we put our trust in him all the time, and if we surrender our lives to him, we will never find disappointment. Be wary of who you, you put your trust in. We, again, if we put our trust in man, we're gonna be disappointed. This is not to say to never trust anybody. It's not like the whole always look behind your back as somebody's after you thing, but for, for our trust for refuge, for where we go, for nourishment, it's, it's the Lord for refuge. Now we, we all, most of us would, would know the story of Jesus walking on water. It was a, it's a pretty, pretty talked about miracle, pretty common thing. And we're, we're gonna look at that story uh, today. Um, but we're not gonna talk about Jesus' act here. We're gonna look at Peter. We're gonna examine Peter's actions pretty closely. This is Matthew uh, chapter 14, verses 22 uh, to 23. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me, to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. Cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said, why do you doubt? Then they climbed into the boat and into the boat, pardon me, they climbed into the boat and the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly you are the son of God. I think there's a pretty key lesson in trust here. It's almost frustrating to think that Peter actually doubted. Peter was walking. You know what water is, right? Did you know you can't walk on it? Is that, is that new? Peter was walking on water. He was walking on, on the water of a storm, looking directly at the son of God, but still he doubted. It's almost frustrating to think about that. Peter, I know I've said, Peter was walking on water, looking at the Son of God straight ahead of him, but still he saw the wind and still he saw the waves. He doubted even though he was walking on water staring at the Son of God. He saw that power ahead of him, but he still doubted. He still lost trust in God because he saw the wind and he saw the waves. Let us, let us not live like that, because we have God there. We have that, that promise. We have God ahead of us calling us. Uh, P- Jesus called Peter onto the water. He said, come onto the water. It's not like Peter just got out of the boat. I mean, he asked, which seems slightly odd, but he, but he, he asked uh, to be on, on the water. And then Jesus called him out. He said, come. And because Jesus called him, he provided. He gave him the ability to walk on, on the water. So, so he had been called there. He had been doing that. He was actively walking on water. He was living out his, his calling, but he, he doubted. It's, it, it's easier to doubt a, a calling. It's, it's easier to, to if, we, if we doubt the Lord before you know, we've reached this, uh, this, this calling he has for us, it's, it's frustrating. It, it really is that we, that we doubt his his assurance in our lives, but if we're actively living it out and, and we doubt, we've, we've missed something uh, pretty big. I had a, I had a sort of, uh, I would, maybe a Peter moment, you would call it. Uh, 
we were in Guatemala recently. I don't know if you've heard, uh, but we, we went on a mission trip there, and I'm not going to talk about the trip, but there was something that happened uh, in, in a series of those days, and it was a very much a Peter moment for me, uh, one that pretty drastically will uh, affect parts of my life, something that I think we can all sort, sort of learn from. So on, on the first day when we actually arrived on the church on Sunday, we had planned to do VBS all week. We had prepared, uh, you know, Joey had done games, Alyssa had done, no, pardon me, Mo had done music, and everybody had planned everything. Paula made all these awesome kids crafts, and we got there on Sunday, and they said, actually, we want you to, to do something else. And, well, we, and we were fine with that. We, we realized we could, we could change our plans, and we were all okay with that. And we showed up Monday to the church, and there, there was nobody there. But because their security system was just a, a door that doesn't really lock, we got into the church and we, we waited at the church for a couple of hours and, and when somebody did show up, they told us we were gonna, gonna go to a school. So we walked through the, the Guatemalan lovely, lovely streets and got to this, it was, it was a private high school and when we went in the doors, we were, we were told we could play games with them, we could teach them about values and, and respect, but we, we could not talk about God or, or the church. I, I wasn't a fan of that. I was, I was a bit upset by that. I was, I was pretty frustrated, and we were there for an hour and a half, two hours. And then when we left that day, and we, we stayed at a seminary all week, it was, it was awesome. But when we went back to the seminary, I was, I was very frustrated. I felt like we had, we had wasted this entire day. I didn't know what the plan was for the next day. I didn't know what was looking ahead. And then the second day happened. We, we went to the church. Somebody was there at this time. Uh, but we got in the church and we were talking with the pastor, uh, Dr. Dr. Hugo, and it turns out he's a, a professor as well. So we got talking with him and he was talking to us and he, he was teaching and we were talking about how we evangelize and still in this moment I was, I was very, very frustrated. I was almost at the point of complete anger. I'm, looking back, I'm super disappointed. <laughs> but uh, but I, I had that and I, just, I, I felt like we weren't doing what we were supposed to do. And they told us we were gonna go to the same school so we started walking. So, so quick, quick recap, I, I, had, I had felt called to go on a missions trip to Guatemala with this group of people. I got there, I you know, worked to get the money, all that. I, I made my way there, I overcame obstacles to be there. I was in another country with these, you know, these 11 other people, 12 other people, and you know, there, there was a bunch of teams, we were there. But I, I still doubt it. I was in another country called there by God working in a church and still I doubted because it didn't quite seem like what I, what I had thought. I, I think that's a pretty Peter moment when we were, I, I was in another country to spread his word and to, to teach there but I still doubted on the second day when things weren't, like, weren't quite looking what I wanted them to. So we, we get in the school and I, I'm all frustrated and I set my bag down and I, I don't even remember who said it, but they told us you can, t- today you can play games and stuff, but you can talk about the church, you can talk about God, do what you want. It, it, was, it was like a kick in the gut because I was ecstatic. I could not believe that we had this amazing opportunity. I was so excited that we could preach the message to these kids, but I was so frustrated and disappointed in the fact that I did not trust. It's a pretty extreme situation. We, I mean, to, to be brought to another country like that and still doubt. But in the end, I saw the Lord provided. The Lord made sure his work was done, even if it didn't look like it on, on the first day or the beginning of the second day, but by the end, it did. And I'm, I'm looking back, really happy I wasn't in charge of the trip because it, it's safe to say that if I was, that doubt I had, that lack of trust in the Lord could have led to some pretty detrimental things. We, we had a pretty po- prosperous trip. We had some, not brag, a large part of it was our missionary, Fernando. Fernando is a lovely guy. Um, you know, but the work we got to do in those schools was just amazing looking back on, you know, to have that opportunity to, to build that connection between the church and the school there and, and the kids. So, so that, that doubt, that lack of trust in the Lord if I was in a position of authority, could have, led to, could have led to some pretty bad things. Some kids came to know the Lord that maybe wouldn't have if I was in a position to do anything 
uh, you know, because of my lack of trust. So that, that was a pretty daunting thing. That, that really changed the way I, I look at things, and I, I think it should for us too. If we, if we trust the Lord, even, thing, even if things look grim, if we've been called to a marine, if we've been called to a river, but we don't see birds, they're coming. If we've been called to wait by a gate and we don't see a widow, she's on the way. If we've been called to Guatemala and don't see kids to minister to, they're coming through the doors when the bell rings. It's, it's gonna happen at some point. It's on, it's on God's time, not ours. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna look again in Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. What, is, what does it practically look like to, to trust in, in the Lord? Different for every one of us, different in every situation. Mine was a pretty almost radical example, but in our daily lives, we, we have situations where we, we need to put our trust, in, well, we need to always have our trust in God, but to surrender our, our lives to him. It may seem like the smart idea to do one thing, but if the Lord's calling us in the other direction, long term, I think it's safe to say he's right. I think it's safe to say if we put our trust in the Lord, he will provide. He will, that's, that's just fact. If we are called somewhere, whatever that may be, however scary that is, however bad the outcome may look, he will provide. Uh, if... You're, you're called by God, he will provide. If you trust and take refuge in the Lord, he will fulfill his, his promise. He will fulfill that trust. And if God calls you into deep water, if you are called into deep water, know that if you walk on it, you will not sink. If you're called out onto the waters, no matter the wind, no matter the wave, you're gonna stand on it as long as you trust in the Lord. Just to clarify, I'm not telling anybody to try to walk on water. This is an analogy. But if you're called out onto those deep waters, please take up that call. Trust in God because he will fulfill and you will have, you, you'll be fulfilled, you'll be able to walk on that water if, you, if you've been called there and you're fulfilling that promise and you're having that, that trust in the Lord. I think we have, we have a last a song here, but just, just before we, we close... Complete and, and total trust in the Lord is, is almost a scary thing. We talk about surrendering to God, to trust him with every part of our life. It's, it's very easy to, to map out a decision in, in, in our lives, in our families, whatever that may be. It's very easy to map out a decision and say, I think this is right. And it may look, it may look right, it may seem right, but if God's calling you to the other side of things, trust. Pray, pray for God's calling in your life, whatever that may be too, if that's to a ministry, if whatever that is, wherever you are in life, God has a, a word for you. I pray that you would pray for that and receive that calling and trust. Trust and surrender. If you guys wanna, wanna come forward. That, that story of Elijah is, is always a fun one. I... I sort of had this weird image of my head and like, like an old RV down by a pond with, you know, carts in it and all that. But it's, it's the amazing picture that if God, if God calls us somewhere, he will provide because he has, has promised that provision. If, the, if you do not see the ravens, they are on the way. If you do not see the kids, they are coming through the door. And if the water doesn't look walkable, give it a check.
Father God, thank you for, uh, for bringing us here today. God, we, we thank you that we, we can come to you at the foot of the cross and just surrender completely to you, God. We thank you that you've given us this opportunity to take refuge in you, to surrender to you, and have, have trust that you will provide, God. We cannot get that with man. We cannot get that trust on earth, God. So we thank you so much that we know we can surrender everything to you and we can trust you with our lives because you have our best interest in mind. He will provide if you call, God. We thank you so much for that. God, we pray that we would not forget those words in our lives. We would not forget to, in our daily lives, surrender at the cross to you, God. Because if we do not surrender at the cross to you, we are living for ourselves and not you. We pray that every day, every morning, we, we pour out our cup to you, God. We surrender at your cross. At the foot of your cross, we, we beg for your mercy, God. And we, we thank you for the refuge you give us. We thank you for that, God. Thank you for the trust we can have in that. I pray that as we, as we go today, God, we would think about how we can give you our entire lives, how we can surrender our trust to you. I pray that we can look at our lives and see in what ways we can re-examine ourselves, that we can rework our lives so that we have everything entrusted to you, God, not parts of our lives, but everything. God, we thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your love. 